Hello, I'm Simon Whistler. You're watching Today I Found Out, and in the video today we're looking at why does the sun make you sneeze? Just before we get started, I do want to say that this episode is brought to you by TunnelBear. TunnelBear makes it easy to privately and securely browse a more open internet. To try TunnelBear for free, go to tunnelbear.com slash brainfood. Have you ever been in a dark place, say a movie theater or a room with all the blinds closed, and then walked outside into the daylight when, all of a sudden, you begin to sneeze uncontrollably? You had no runny nose or desire to sneeze prior to this exposure to sunlight, but you just can't help that big achoo. If you answered yes, then you are part of 20 to 35 percent of the human population that are victims of this not highly understood phenomenon known as photic sneeze reflex or a solar sneeze. So the question now becomes, why do certain people have solar sneezes and how does it work? Indeed, it's only in the past few years that scientists have begun to understand this rather odd trait. The great Greek philosopher Aristotle in 350 BC asked the question in his first volume of the Book of Problems. He asked, why does the heat of the sun provoke sneezing? This was the first recorded evidence of the photic sneeze reflex. Aristotle theorized that the heat of the sun caused moisture, sweating, inside of the nose and mouth. Then, in order to get rid of this moisture, one had to sneeze. It's not actually a bad hypothesis. In the 17th century, the great scientist and one of the developers of the scientific method, Francis Bacon, tackled the question of solar sneezes himself. He determined that looking into the sun made one's eyes water, which got into the nose and caused the sneeze. Said Bacon, The drawing down the moisture of the brain, for it will make the eyes run with water, and the drawing of the moisture to the eyes, doth draw it to the nostrils by motion of consent, and so followeth sneezing. Later, scientists determined this to be incorrect as well, simply because the sneeze happens too quickly after the exposure to light. Watery eyes, they take time to develop. Then the phenomenon went unstudied for the better part of the next 350 years. Finally, in 1964, a study started to shed a little more light on what was going on by proving that solar sneezes were actually a genetic trait. The study also showed that the trait was autosomal dominant, meaning only one gene has to be present for the trait to be expressed. If one parent has the reflex, then there's a 50% chance their children will have it too. In 1978, Dr. Roberta Pagan and her colleagues they went further. While attending a birth defect conference, the subject turned to a lighter note, the solar sneeze. After a quick survey, four out of the ten doctors in the discussion explained that they and their families were prone to solar sneezes. Not only that, the times one sneezed during an episode seemed to be consistent within families, but different among each family. One person said it was common for people in his family to sneeze five times, in my family it was three, and another person said once. So, with this new piece of information, the doctors, as they are prone to do, dug deeper. Together, they wrote a paper on it and called the solar sneeze something a bit more scientific, autosomal dominant compelling helio-ophthalmic outburst syndrome, or a chew. So what exactly is going on in the body that causes this? Well, a study in 2010 done by University of Zurich professor Nicholas Langer attempted to figure this one out by examining the different brain reactions of those who solar sneeze and those who don't. He hooked up 20 subjects, 10 with the trait and 10 who didn't, to an electroencephalography machine, which is also known as an EEG machine, and then he exposed them to a bright light to measure their brain and neural responses. Dr. Langer came up with pretty surprising results. The photic sneeze reflex is not a classical reflex that occurs only at a brainstem or spinal cord level. It seems to involve other cortical areas of the brain. Given what he was seeing from the EEGs, he came up with two hypotheses of why solar sneezes happen. The first one is that the visual system in the brain is simply more sensitive in solar sneezes. Overstimulation of light triggers a panicked response from other parts of the brain, including somatosensory systems which control sneezing. His other idea is a tad more complicated and actually renders Aristotle's and Bacon's notions not too far off, at least in part. In this one, a sneeze is triggered by the nose being irritated, though unlike what Aristotle and Bacon proposed, moisture has nothing to do with it. The trigeminal nerve, which is responsible for certain facial sensitivity and motor controls, senses the irritation. So what exactly is causing the irritation? The trigeminal nerve is near the optic nerve, which sends visual information from the retina to 
to the brain. So when a sudden burst of light fills the retina and the optic nerve sends a signal to the brain to restrict the pupil, the signal could, in theory, be sensed by the trigeminal nerve and be mistaken by the brain as the nose being irritated, thus the individual sneeze. Whatever the case, next time you walk out from a dark place into the bright light and your autosomal dominant compelling helio-ophthalmic outburst, a cheese syndrome, acts up, you know who is to blame. Your parents. Well, the son too, but mostly one or both of your parents. And now for some bonus facts. The International Space Station orbits about 354 kilometers, that's 220 miles, above the Earth and travels at approximately 27,700 kilometers an hour, that's 17,211 miles per hour, so it takes about 92 minutes to circle the Earth once. For this reason, every 45 minutes, the astronauts on board see a sunrise or sunset, with a total of 15 to 16 of each every 24 hours. Without proper visual protection, that's a lot of sneezes for someone who has the syndrome. Of course, without proper visual protection, sneezing would be the least of their problems when looking at the sun from space. And if you did happen to look at the sun directly from space, you'd actually find that it looks white in the human visual spectrum, not yellow. And now for another bonus fact. Even though a Chu syndrome is a relatively benign genetic trait, there are occupational hazards for several types of jobs. For instance, a paper published in Military Medicine in 1993 entitled The Photic Sneeze Reflex as a Risk Factor to Combat Pilots notes that the reflex could trigger an unexpected sneezing episode during critical periods of flight. This is an unrecognized and previously unreported danger to fixed-wing and rotary aircraft pilots. While this is a risk, it is noted that a solar sneeze can usually be combated by simply wearing a pair of polarized sunglasses. This episode has been brought to you by TunnelBear, the easy-to-use VPN app. And today, we're going to look at some bear-related bonus facts. Bears might look slow and clumsy, but they can run up to 30 miles per hour for an extended period of time. If you see a bear, don't try to outrun it. Usain Bolt averages 27 miles per hour. And, well, you're not Usain. And now for another bonus fact. In Alabama, it's illegal to keep or train bears for the purposes of wrestling. If someone tries to sell you tickets to a bear wrestling match or asks you to hold their seat while they buy some honey, well, just say no. And, well, to kick the bear factor up another notch with an app that roars from your pocket while it encrypts your data, try TunnelBear for free, no credit card required, at tunnelbear.com brainfood. And thank you to TunnelBear for supporting this episode. And thank you for watching.